Whenever preparing to scan a triple tray impression, it's always useful to eliminate any deep vestibular areas. Uh, these tall areas can cause problems with the camera getting in there to see the impression clearly. And so what you can do is simply take a scalpel or any type of a sharp blade and just reduce the length of those vestibular areas. This will not contribute to the accuracy of the scan in any way and by reducing them it will allow the camera to be able to see more clearly inside of the prep tooth. Do the same for the opposing. And that should do it. Once the impression has been trimmed, it's now time to scan it inside of the uh, Shining 3D DSEX scanner. So I'm putting in the patient name, I'm doing a scan type of impression, and the occlusion as triple tray. We'll be doing a crown on number, uh, number 30. And so click next, and the scanner will go through a few initial movements as it starts up, and it's going to ask you to uh, insert the lower impression. Now you can see in the bottom left screen that I'm powdering this impression. Uh, PVS is generally pretty shiny and scanners do better when they don't have a shiny surface to read. So I'm just spraying a bit of powder onto that surface. Uh, that will knock all the gloss off. And now I'm putting the uh, triple tray inside of the magnetic impression holder. And so this is just a spring-loaded clip. The handle goes into that and then you can orient it inside of the uh, scanner. Click next, it's going to begin going through the automated uh, capture of all of these images, which I've sped up for the sake of time here. This is not real time in this portion. But once it goes through all these automated images, it will bring this scan up. And at that point, you can uh, look at this image in more detail and look for any areas where there might be missed data. And so if I zoom in there, you can see that there's some holes in the mesh. If you click Add Scan, you can actually add some more scan data to that. It will capture another image, and that will reduce the holes inside of this image. And so I'm going to flip this around and look at this from every angle. And as you can see, there's a little area missing on the contact point, so I'm going to add scan data there. And you will see that be filled in by the next set of images, and now it's filled in. So once that's complete, click Next, and now the software will ask you to flip the impression over for the upper impression. And so I flipped that over, and now I can click Next, and the software is going to lead through the same automated uh, capture of the data on this opposing side. So as you can see here, it's uh, running through, it's capturing all of these images. And now you see that that's complete. Didn't need to add any scan data on that one, so click Next. And the next thing that will come up is the screen where the software stitches these together. Now it stitches those based on the external data of the scan. And so you can see here that things have been meshed together properly. And now I am trimming the data because things like the, uh, the buckle of that triple tray impression or the handle, things like that. We just really don't need that stuff in there. And so what I'm doing is using the freeform uh, cut tool and I hold down shift on the keyboard and then left click and just outline any areas that I wanna get rid of. Uh, do it again, push delete, it will delete all of those. And so here you can see the end result. These are our two STL models of the upper and the lower. And once you click next again, that will complete the scanning pro process. And at that point, if you wanted to view these STLs, you could click open order path on the home screen and it will open up the folder where those are saved. They will be labeled as upper and lower. Uh, these could now be sent to your lab for uh, design or they could be opened in whatever design software you may have, 3Shape, ExoCAD. Um, but at that point, it's really done. And so that completes the process.